All right, here's Rocky Long on the Corky's Hotline back on Scott and BR on the Mighty 1090. Happy New Year, Coach. Happy New Year to you guys. How are you doing? Doing really good. Yourself? Well, right now I'm doing really good. I don't have to worry about who I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, but but this is probably a really busy time, I would think, finalizing recruiting, no? Well, right now uh, all the coaches other than me are at the National Coaches Convention, and we're in a dead period till Thursday, and then – Thursday it's going to heat back up again and we'll be all back on the road and trying to convince those guys to come to San Diego State and be part of our program. Did you say all the coaches except you are at some coaching convention? Yeah, there's a National Football Coaches Association convention in San Antonio going on right now. And how come you don't go? Well, I, I found out a long time ago when it was really, really fun when I was an assistant coach, but since I've become a head coach, <laughs> uh, you can't you can't even walk through the lobby without uh, being attacked for a, a job. Lot of people boy. you don't know, so I just as soon stay here and watch it in the privacy of my home. People that that you don't know but know you very well, right? Well, they don't know me very well, but they're looking for jobs. <laughs> right. I know how that goes. Right. Exactly. Right. There's the coach from San Diego State. I want to live there and work there. Yeah. Hey, coach, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, I understand. I got it. So your coaches are looking for jobs. Well, I hope not, but uh, <laughs> there, there's always a possibility, you know, the, the difference in pay between the Power Five and the other five or whatever we're called is quite a bit. And, and, and you know, I really hope that some of them get a chance to get more responsibility. Uh, you know, a couple of them are ready to be coordinators that haven't been, and I hope they get that chance. And then you can never – you never sat for a guy that might triple his salary. Yeah, right. Hey, Coach, um, Donnell Pumphrey today says that he's coming back for his senior year. I, I know it's news, although it's not to me, because I remember he told us that three months ago that he was planning on coming back for his senior year. And then you had the kid Monte Casey, who, who's decided to come back also. I, I want to start with Casey. Is he coming back because he found out maybe that he's not going to be considered you know, first, second round type material? I mean, here he is, a second team All-American kid. What, what went into Casey's decision to come back? Well, first of all, I, I think we actually have six juniors that uh, if they came out, could get drafted. Most of them would be late round draft choices, uh, so it's probably not financially feasible for them to come out. DJ has always said he wanted to come back, and that's good for us. Uh, Demonte, I think, is getting a lot of different information and a lot of different uh, advice from a lot of different people. I, I don't think any of those guys, any of the six, want to leave. Uh, but if they had, you know, a financial reason for leaving, uh, they probably should leave. Uh, we, we canvassed or we asked the NFL to canvass all the NFL teams about those six guys. We can, we only got information back on five because I guess that's all they do is five guys. And every one of them, um, uh, they suggested stay in school. Now, DJ and DeMonte had the highest ranking. They, you know, they said they could go anywhere from the third round down. Uh, most of the rest of them were fifth and sixth round or seventh round draft choices, so it's smart for them to say. You know, a third rounder is kind of an in-between deal, and I, I think he thinks he's going to improve his stock by well, playing real good again in another year. Sure. Right, good for him. That's the way it works. Yeah. How many of them ask, ask you for for your advice? Well, I, I stay completely out of it until yeah. they come see me. Yeah. And uh, the other four uh, must have never even thought about it because they didn't even ask anybody. Yeah. Uh, those two actually came and saw me about three days ago, and we talked about all the possibilities and all those kind of things, and. And they sure sound like they're staying. You know, it's not over yet because they can still declare all the way up until I think the 19th of January. And I'm sure there's a lot of uh, people out there trying to get to them and change their mind to come out. But they sure seem like they're staying, and that's good recruiting by us. Yeah, right on. Rocky Long, head coach of San Diego State, is with us on Scott and BR on the Mighty 1090. Coach, um, I'm just curious, and then we'll, we'll move on. I want to hear what you think about Alabama Clemson. But I'm curious, a guy like Christian Chapman, the way he came in and played in the Mountain West Conference Championship game – and then in the bowl game, is Christian, Christian Chapman now the incumbent starting quarterback? Well, I, I think going into spring practice and fall camp, he'd be the starting quarterback. Uh, I think Maxwell Smith is still trying to decide. He kind of goes back and forth whether he wants to try for the sixth year or not, and, and he hasn't really determined that. And we haven't even turned in the paperwork yet because we're waiting for him to decide. Um but I think going in, uh, obviously, Maxwell with his injury would not be in spring practice. Uh, he wouldn't be ready to go until fall camp. And Christian would go into fall camp as the starter, but they would compete for the starting quarterback job. Gotcha. You see, that's very interesting, you know, because I know you guys, uh, and I know you can't even get into this, but there's a recruit here in town. And there's been, you know, little rumors, you know, might he, you know, take back his San Diego State commitment and go somewhere else? And, you know, you're looking at Chapman now who, who's going in as a starter 
in what will be his sophomore year. I just wonder how that impacts recruiting, but uh, I know you can't get into that kind of stuff. Coach, let's uh, let's turn our attention. Billy Ray, come on, man. College football Hall of Famer that you are. Are you watching tonight Uh Alabama and Clemson or what? (laughs) Scotty, I'm I'm definitely – I'm watching this game from kickoff to final final play. It's going to be a lot of fun. Coach, who do you like tonight? Well, I – it's not who I like. It's who I want to win. Okay. And I want Clemson to win. Me too. Because Alabama, I think uh, starting 11s on both sides of the ball, I think they're very equal. I think the talent level is very equal. Alabama's been there a whole bunch of time. Clemson hadn't been there very much. I think the difference is in the depth. I think Alabama has a lot more depth. Uh, So I hope nobody on Clemson's team gets hurt, and I hope it's a great game because I'm going to watch it from start to finish without even leaving my chair. Mm. I want Clemson also. Billy Ray, do you have a well, why, why is that? Well, because, look, the SEC is everybody's you know best conference in college football every year. Uh-huh. Alabama has gone total football factory, the point where nobody can even recruit with these guys because they win so yeah. much and they play so many guys. It's not like you, you're you a defensive lineman and you go, well, I'll never get on the field. They rotate in six, seven, eight guys. Yeah. Um, and I'm also rooting for the team from the ACC because this is, of all these power conferences, they're kind of considered the weakest. So, I've got, I got some rooting interest here for Clemson today. You, Billy Ray? I'm I'm going to go with the Crimson Tide only because when I was a freshman at Arkansas, they put a beat down on us that <laughs> I I can't recall because they were hitting us so hard. Uh, and it, it was uh, it was that that group with Bear Bryant on the sideline and Stedman Sheely in the backfield. It was uh it was a crazy game. Coach, I'm wondering you know what you think about the way they recruited Alabama. Look, they've got the money They've got the facilities. They've got the tradition. The reputation. But man. but you would just think that they'd be everybody else would be able to recruit against them because you you play the you're you're never going to see the field card. But it seems like all the best players want to go there. I I think they have a real advantage in recruiting. I, I think all the power fives with the difference in resources and the money they're spending now have huge advantages from the non power fives. But Alabama's reputation and their success over the years. Uh, makes all the best players want to go there. I mean, if you're a best player, you don't. If you're one of the greatest players in high school football, you don't care who's there. You you assume you're going to go in and, and either start or play anyway. And the number of players they put into the NFL speaks for itself. And like you say, I, I think the depth is so much there, so great there that they alternate guys in and out. So they might not be playing 50, 60, 70 plays a game, but they're playing 25 or 30 at a very high level. They don't get tired. They don't take chances of injuries. So they're up in their NFL stock. So I, I think that all the great players would want to go there. Wow. All right, I've got Clemson. Coach is rooting for Clemson. Billy Ray's rooting for Alabama because he took a beat down his freshman year. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the game tonight, Coach. We'll look forward to talking to you right after signing day. Thanks, Rock. I appreciate it, guys.